back YouTube to another episode of Industries Garage. I'm Reed and this is Eric and today we want to talk about what happens when you uh, go to your dealer or you go to your parts installer and you're trying to find a part. You go there and you discover that it's a little more than what you're expecting to pay so you think you can find a better deal online. And we're going to talk about why purchasing items online can be detrimental if you don't know what you're looking for when it comes to dealing with that particular part. I mean, Eric, you run into this all the time in the shop. Every day. You say, hey, we will need to install a new set of tires onto your motorcycle because, you know, there's no tread left on it. No tread at and all. And you're not all allowed to run stuff. street slicks. Right. But you want to charge me almost $200 for a tire, and I can find one online for less than that. What, why Why would I come buy it from you? <laughs> Let's say that you buy a name brand tire, okay? And it's of the size that you want, but the tire comes to the shop, customers will have it drop shipped here, or maybe they have it shipped to their house. Either way, the tire gets to the shop, you're gonna put it on, and it's new, but man, is it new old stock. It is shiny because the rubber's getting hard, and you go to put it on the bike, and it doesn't want to balance and it's been stacked under tires for three or four years and it doesn't want to go round anymore and doesn't want to balance or if it goes on and actually balances and is somewhat round then it wears funny and then the customer wants to come back and wants to say that you balance something incorrectly or you mounted something incorrectly and you look at the date code on it and it could have been made five years ago, six years ago. So I know you've got a tire over there next to you that has been has sent by a customer <laughs> to put on a motorcycle. So let's let's see that tire. All right, let's grab this tire. <laughs> so this tire was bought from a discount warehouse right here. And whenever we look at the date code, it shows that this tire was made the 10th month of 2000. So it's well seasoned. <laughs> An 18 year old tire, ladies and gentlemen. And it has still has the, the blue packing on it. But here's interesting thing number two, is that it is no, this tire is no longer made by the manufacturer anymore. Gotcha. But it was inexpensive. So how would somebody get a tire like this? I mean, it's, I get it that they bought it online and they brought it to you, but I mean, what? Where, where do they buy something like this? From an li online liquidator somewhere. Online liquidators are full of old inventory, and it can be anything from tires to helmets to charging components, and they could be name brand, they could be no name brand, they're just liquidating discontinued or overstocked items. You know, Eric brings up a great point, and we want to make sure that our viewers understand it particularly when you're buying something online from a liquidator. If it's a tire and they won't tell you the date stamp on the tire, particularly if it's a motorcycle tire, you run a high risk of having a failure and it's a safety concern. Uh, my advice is, is to choose a motorcycle dealer locally or to choose a local specialty shop, sort of like what we are, and have a professional relationship with them and go face to face and pay a little bit more money and buy a better product. So here we have a customer that wanted to change the front end on his motorcycle and he bought a whole front end kit online, okay? Now, here's another example of being weary when you buy products online. So he wanted a Super Glide front end and the Super Glide front end appears to be nice. It appears to be pretty good quality. Here's the rub though is that the front end, the triple clamps, are too narrow for the wheel that came with the kit. Although this kit was supposed to be matched and was a bolt-on application, we're gonna show you how it's not. Okay, so in this kit, this was supposed to be a matched setup where the wheel matches the front end. As we can see here clearly, the hub itself for the wheel is way too wide for this front end. As a matter of fact, the distance from this side of the rotor to this side of the hub is actually wider than the outside distances of this front end. 
There's another interesting thing about this pre-purchased kit is that the axle is a three quarter inch axle. The bearing on one side of the motorcycle is a three quarter inch axle. However, when we turn the motorcycle wheel around, this side has a one inch bearing in it, which does not fit the axle at all. And another interesting thing is that it has an electronic speedo pickup, which is also one inch. So the kit comes, it won't work. At this point, we're out a lot of money with special manufacturing and machining. So how do we fix this problem? Really easy. We have to build a spacer. So we build a billet aluminum spacer to take up the distance with the bearing and the axle. Again, this is another inexpensive buy online that's supposed to be a direct bolt-on that just costs more money. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching this episode of Industries Garage. You know, we spent this time talking about some of the parts that you can purchase online at a reduced cost, but if you would just simply go talk to your dealer, go talk to your parts installer, uh, you'll find out that it may be a little bit more expensive, but in the long run, you're gonna save that much more money. If you like this video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can continue to show you more products on Industries Garage and how we talk about the industry helping you as a consumer. Thanks again.